Tampa Variance Review Board. From my left, the members of the board are Brian Bryant, Todd Schultz, Sam Decker, Brett Feldman. Also in attendance this evening from legal, Susan Johnson Velez, from de from uh, planning, we have Josh Blackman and Lisa Middleton. There are some procedural rules that we need you to follow. You might note that there are only four members of the board up here at the moment. We're expecting a fifth one to come, but pursuant to rule 4.10, if only four members of the board are available to take an action, then an applicant shall have the right to continue the matter until there are a minimum of five board members. Since we're expecting a fifth board member later in the meeting, um, if you would like to request a continuance to the end of the agenda, you can do so. If we still don't have five board members, you may request a continuance to the next BRB board meeting or to the next available position on an upcoming BRB board agenda. You must make this election before you come up for your presentation. When your case number and petitioner's name are called, please approach the podium. When you approach the podium, please state your name, address, and confirm that you've been sworn in. The petitioner or its agent will have 10 minutes to make a presentation. All other persons or participants wishing to speak will then have three minutes. Then the petitioner will have an additional five minutes for rebuttal if needed. The time periods as stated will be kept by the board. Any information such as pictures or plans that have not previously been submitted as part of the petition and that you intend to submit for consideration in support of your petition must be individually presented and accepted by the board. After acceptance by the board, you must submit the item to staff for it to be entered and made part of the permanent record. The board bases its decision on competent and substantial evidence which is submitted and which meets the criteria required by the city's code of ordinances. Please be sure to clearly state your hardship criteria during your presentation. A majority of the board is needed to approve your variance. The variance granted by the board will only be for what is shown on the site plan and will be in compliance with any terms or conditions stated by the board. All other city codes must also be satisfied. If the case is approved, your variance will expire two years from the date of decision. If your case is continued, it will either be continued to the next month's BRB board agenda or to the next available position on an upcoming BRB board agenda. If your case is denied, you may wish to have the variance review board's decision appealed by the city council. You must file your petition for review of the board's decision within 14 days of the board's written decision. You will not be able to pull any permits until the 14 day review period has passed. Your cooperation in ensuring that this meeting is run smoothly is greatly appreciated. Can I please have a motion to approve the February 13th BRB board meeting? So moved. <clears throat> Second. Thank you. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. The meeting minutes are approved. At this time, I'll ask legal staff to confirm whether there are any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, if, are there any board members who have a conflict of interest with respect to any matter on the agenda this evening? Um, as previously disclosed, I have an, um, a conflict with respect to item three. Um, so I'll, I'm filling out the form and I'll just recuse myself from that one. Okay, thank you. Seeing none others, um, I would now ask any board members if they have had any ex parte communications with anyone with respect to any matter on the agenda this evening? No. All right, all have signified no, thank you. All right, are there um, any changes to the agenda that the staff wishes to address this evening? No changes at this time. Okay. And at this time, I would ask the <coughs> staff member to conduct the swearing in. If anybody in the audience um, could speak this evening, could foreseeably speak this evening, wants to speak this evening, please stand so that you can be sworn in. First case we have this evening is BRB 23-70, which is a request for a continuance. Um, is the applicant here? Uh, good evening, Council. Our Council, uh, <laughs> I'm used to uh, you know an autopilot here. Uh, board members, uh, Steve Michelini representing the owners at 16 Davis. Uh, we've been meeting with the uh, with the neighborhoods, and uh, we have agreed to request a, uh, a continuance for this item and to re-notice the hearing for May. So we're respectfully requesting that this be continued to May. Okay, thank 
you. Legal stuff. So yeah, Madam Chair, the only the only thing I would note is that um, in pursuant to the board's rules of procedure, um, any cases continued by the board at the request of the applicant for any reason shall be continued for two months. So May would be the next meeting, so it would be the June okay. meeting that according to your rules that would okay. be the appropriate meeting. Thank you. And do you have any objection to moving? Yes, we do object to moving to, to June. Um, that date of May was discussed extensively with the Neighborhood Association, um, and everyone was in agreement that that should occur. Uh, this has to do with clarifications regarding the site plan, uh, and as part of those conditions, as I said, was to re-notice the neighbors um, regarding this matter. So this is not a routine request for a continuance. It's a special request that we be considered for May. I don't, do we have an, the ability to even override our rules? I mean, they're your rules of procedure. So. Right. Is there, would there be an issue with notification of the, because usually it takes two months, you have to do 30 day notification posted as long as that. Well, they have. We can meet the days. notice deadline as long as we mail out this Friday. But I would ask for, if the board is, is inclined to do that, I would ask for a motion first to waive your rules of procedure to allow for less than two months required and then make a motion to continue. Okay, fair enough. Um, so if the board is so inclined, I don't have an objection to moving it a month, um, but if we could have two motions, the first one to waive our rules. So I will make okay. a motion. Is it, I think. Is it? Oh, 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 sorry. Yes, um, in, I should have asked if there was anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this app. This yes, request for uh, my name is Debbie Zomerman, 192 Corsica, and I've been sworn and I'm chair of the zoning committee for the Davis Island Civic Association. Um, it, I, just speaking with the representatives, I guess the letter they sent to us had to do with May, but for this to be re-noticed, we ex were expecting a 30-day re-notice, and they are going to correct the application, and I've been at multiple meetings with I mean, that Mr. Michelini hasn't actually been at, but um, basically the whole request is really not clear to us what they're asking for. The basis for the variance isn't clear. We've asked for different items with regards to elevation, site plans, things like that. We're still awaiting that information. So um, I think the public needs the full notice period because the application is going to be very different from what the original application was. And as of yet, we still don't, we don't even know the basis for the variance, okay. nor the code sections that are being requested, that type of thing. So the, the city's code of ordinances does require a 30-day notice, and I think what Mr. Michelini was saying is that as long as they mail out the notice by this Friday, which I guess it's the 12th, the next BRB meeting is May 14th, so there would be 30 days the, the, the required 30-day notice, although Mr. McLean did also say yeah, we, that. We're not asking for a waiver of the 30-day notice. We'll comply with that. Yeah. Um, so in light of that information. Okay, and then so the so what I'm understanding is the corrected application that we were promised at least two months ago will be in the record specifically stating what the basis for the variance is, what the hardship is, and also the additional information that we've been requesting. We're, we will need to see all that within the date of the notice. Because right. so otherwise notice, the application wouldn't be complete. So the notice will outline the requested variance. Um, I don't believe it has to outline the hardship criteria. It probably wouldn't actually. But you could, of course, come to the meeting. Right. Oh. I would tell you that you know what she's asking for is beyond the scope of the board mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, we're simply asking for the continuance, and we're agreeing to comply with the 30 days. And, and so what, her questions relate to the actual presentation uh, well, and, no. not, and, and not to the continuance. Well, and so my, my question for you, Ms. Sommerman, is, is if you object to a continuance until May 14th, with, with the understanding that there will be a 30-day notice, and the notice will be in a similar form to what you've received previously. What we were told by Gina Grimes at two meetings, not one, but two meetings, was that they would redo the entire application submittal. In the application, give the basis for the request, the specific code sections, the actual hardship criteria, not just repeating the language of the hardship, but the actual hardship criteria and the legal basis for the hardship. And then we would also have the site plan and the rest of the information that would be 
basically the significant basis for the request for the hardship, and and that we've been waiting for for two months. And so what I would say is that you know again the applicant I mean, only the, has to meet the, the, the thirty question days. question is. I mean, she's getting into a lot of other things that do not relate at all yeah. no, to the I, continuance. I, I, well, then I, I would Understood. prefer that. So my question for you is yeah, to object I, to the continuance. I think that the continuance needs to be a bit longer because we don't have any of the information or the revised application that was promised to us. I believe it was two months ago, but it was definitely more than a month ago. Okay. So, so thank you very do you much. A, do you have a thought process that if it was continued for an extra month that they would actually provide that to you? Well, we're, we're hopeful. We believe they're sincere when they say it, um, but we need to have time to review it. And it was going to be a newly submitted application. And at the meeting, you know, we had neighborhood representatives. I was there. Susan Swift was there. Michael Fredelia was there. Steve Stanley was there. Uh, Patrick Murphy was there. And Gina Grimes was there. So that was what we discussed in the meeting, and I was present. With all due respect, board, the, when the meetings were occurred, they agreed to a, a continuance to May. No. There was, excuse me, but it's in the letter. Um, and, and if she wants to testify, she can testify otherwise. But the board did not take a position on a continuance for 60 days. This is her preference. We're, okay. we're going to meet statutory requirements for 30 days. And with all due respect, it's not my preference. I'm trying to, he wasn't at the meeting. so. If the letter said May, we just didn't think to ask the question of May. We, we were still expecting that we would get the information that we've been requesting for a couple of months. So the problem is, is that by the time we come in front of you the next time, it should be a, they agreed to doing a different application because we pointed out the areas of deficiencies within their application. They were going to redo the application. They were going to re-notice the application. And they were going to give us information, and we've gotten none of that so far. So the reason I'm saying this is because for us to actually receive the information and have the ability to evaluate it, it it's going to be, you know, I, I think it's getting very tight. We were expecting to have it more time to review. Yep, and we appreciate that. Okay, thank this you so much. So, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So the only comment I would make, I mean, the, the things that Ms. Armerman is speaking about could be things that the board could take into consideration when determining whether you want to waive your rules that require the two months. Yep, that's a good point. Continuance. Thank okay. you very much. Um, so, Mr. McElhaney, I suppose you have five minutes for rebuttal. Well, we're going to meet the statutory requirements, and, and you know, it, uh, I. Quite honestly, I mean, I was uh, I was aware of the 60-day continuance uh, applying to other matters, but when you meet with a HOA and they agree to a date and they agree to a continuance, it puts a hardship on us to, to comply with a 30-day notice. However, that's statutory and we're agreeing to do that uh, if the board is willing to give us that time. We've continued it before uh, and basically the continuances previous to this were based upon comments from the Neighborhood Association uh, and they're not understanding what the exact intent of the variance was. Um, in those other private meetings, we've tried to clarify that, um, and I believe we can meet the requirement for the 30 days. We're prepared to do that, and we're respectfully requesting the, the board to uh, allow us to be heard in May. Thank you. Thank you. I have one, one more question. Um, how long has this been going on? I, I, just, I feel like this has been continued a few times. It has. Um, I, we first filed this in, um, in, in November, uh, and then there were was, there was some other changes, there were other questions. Then the HOA hired a, a number of different uh, consultants to advise them, and there have been ongoing discussions this whole time. Um, it's outlined in the letter that you received requesting the continuance uh, about all the different measures that have been taken. And we are making revisions to the site plan. We are adding additional language to the narrative uh, that will help clarify all of this. But that should all be completed uh, at least in the 30-day window that we are providing for notice, as well as posting the sign and sending out the notices. We're also sending the notices out to 300 feet instead of the 250 feet, uh, which was originally required by the code. The code has since changed. The notice signs have changed. And so we're complying with those new requirements as well. Yes. Um, the 
and I'm sorry I don't remember her name, but the 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 um, lady that was up here mentioned that um, they were expecting documentation from uh, your client that they have not received yet um, over the last two months. Can you speak to to that? They'll have it. When? They'll have it before the 30 days. On like or day before 30 days. Day 27, I'm sorry? Day 26. No, I said on or before the 30 days. So they would, they in, in, they in essence could possibly not have time to review. Correct? No, no, you would have the same statutory requirements that you have for any other notice. By the, by the city code, your application has to be completed and has to be uh, ready at the 30 day period. So any changes that we make, they have to be in 30 days in advance. Otherwise, the staff doesn't have time to review and comment regarding what the submission is. I understand. Thank you. If, if I understand it correctly, when the, the petition is made, that would be a matter of public record, correct? Whether they send it directly to the homeowners or not, I think they would have to notice the direct owners around them. But that's now a point where there's a minimum of 30 days public record that they can look at the variance as filed. Is that correct? Or is it? Well, and I, I'm not sure I'm clear about all the changes that are being made to this application. Yeah. If they're submitting a new application with different grounds, and if they're submitting a site plan, that your, your rules of procedure do call for the site plan to be submitted no less than three weeks prior to the public hearing. And if it's not, then the matter has to be continued in accordance with the rules, which would mean a two-month continuance unless you waive your rules. So yeah, We're um, inside the deadline date for making changes to site plans. So technically, we have to request a, a continuance regardless. Um, because the staff would not have had a chance to look at it. Um, and, but we, we committed to having that all done, submitted into the record, and it would be available, as you mentioned, in the cellar. Did you have a question? Yeah, I just have one simple question, and this is, um, this is for Mrs. Sommerman or uh, anyone else who is at the meeting who wants to talk about it. I do see the letter that talks about a continuance until the May meeting. Can you just confirm that the folks that uh, were at that meeting were comfortable with a May 14th uh, variance hearing? Uh, the last meeting we had was prior to the second continuance, as if I'm remembering correctly. So basically, we had been asking for the information and we did not receive it, but we got the continuance letter and I, I, I can, be the first one to admit I didn't pay attention to the date because I thought I would, you know, that would be up to you, to this board to make that decision and follow the rules that are in place. But we, so we got the letter and we got it before the Davis Island Civic Association meeting that we had on last Tuesday. We voted to take no position versus in the past we voted to not oppose. And it's because the application, they're essentially submitting a new application because the, the, of the flaws. So we don't Excuse even- Excuse me, I, I have to object. Well, she's, no, please, she's please don't. Let her speak, let her speak Mr. The... McLeany. Please okay. don't interrupt. Let me, let me just clarify. I understand you need additional documents. Uh -huh. I understand that those documents, if they are provided, will be provided mm -hmm. by the statutory date. Right. So presumably you'll get those documents within 30 days. If they don't, they can't be heard on in, in May, even if we vote to approve a May continuance. So assuming they get all that information to you, you certainly can evaluate that and make a decision as to whether oppose, not oppose, uh, or, or support whatever they're asking for within that time frame. All I'm asking is, were, were the folks, they sent out this continuance letter in May, were the folks who were at that meeting comfortable with a May date or at least comfortable with, we'll get 30 days to review this? No, this, this continuance letter came way after the last, we haven't had a meeting oh, okay. with them. So we just got an email is what we got. And we've been waiting since, so February was our-, our Yeah, uh, you, yeah. you need additional documents, I get yeah. that. Yeah, and, and so um, what I will do is I will put in the to the record the emails that substantiate what I'm saying today, and I defer to you, you're the experts, and you know what would be the best procedure to go through. But I wanna make it clear, we've been waiting for months for the information, we haven't gotten it. It will be a substantially different application, and if it's in a month, we will show up. Um, but we've been waiting it for it for a while, so okay. we would like a little bit more time. So we, thank we, you. We got that. Thank yeah, you so thank much, you. Mr. 
that's probably Mr. McLean. Do you have anything else on, yeah. on just on the date issue? Anything else you want? Yeah, to Yeah, I just wanted to clarify for the for the board that you know you know an email was sent to Ms. Uh, Zamoran uh, amongst many other uh, neighbors, and and we attached the continuance request submitted to the city, and and the and the outline of the plan was that we would recirculate to them the following requested documents if the continuance is granted revised simplified survey site plan and elevations summary of the variance request which addresses hardship criteria and the proposed restrictive covenant all of that will get recirculated if this continuance is granted to the neighbors that requested including this summary thank you So we had a couple other questions, so I'm going to give the applicant another five minutes for rebuttal if you need it. No, well, I think that we've answered all your questions and um, we've agreed to comply with the code um, and all of the information will be available on the 30 days, uh, on or before the 30 days. Okay, so we you. respectfully request first that you consider waiving your rules and second that you grant the continuance to May. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to close the public hearing and open it up for a motion from the board or some discussion. Yeah, I'm inclined to grant it. It doesn't, it, it feels like we're, if we get, this thing's been out there a while, everybody knows about it. If we go into summer, past Memorial Day, people are on vacation. That's a fair it's, point. It's, I mean, also, if we continued it for two months, there's no obligation for the applicant to actually give the documents nope. until 30 days prior yeah, anyway. Nope. Exactly. So, I mean, I think there's, it doesn't do the public any service to continue pushing this out. Um, so I'll go ahead and make a motion that we waive our rules uh, with with respect to this variance request from a 60 day to and reduce it to a 30 day okay. um, for continuation. Second. Motion by Mr. Fultz, second by Mr. Fry. All those in favor of waiving our rules, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay. Now, is there a motion to continue uh, BRB 23-70? Do I need yes. The, yeah, if you've got the form. There's no form for it. No. Uh, I move to continue VRB 23-70 for property located at 16 Davis Boulevard um, until the May 14th Variance Review Board hearing at 5.30 p.m. Second. By Mr. Feldman, second by Mr. Fry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. You've been continued until May 14th. Thank you very much for your consideration. Yeah. All right. So moving on to our first variance of the night, BRB 24-07. Good evening. Uh, the first case is BRB 2407. The owners Robert and Jennifer uh, Glasser. The applicants Mark Bentley. It's located at 2313 West Bristol Avenue. Mm -hmm. The zoning is RS50, uh, and the request today is to reduce the required 60 foot front yard setback from 39 or 239 feet for the uh, accessory structure. They're asking relief from code section 27291A1. Uh, the accessory structure setbacks are 60 feet for the front, three feet for the rear, and three feet for the sides, uh, and seven for the corner. There has been no previous action on this site. Here is an aerial, and the subject site is highlighted in that orange dashed line. Here is the site plan and the area for request is in that uh, hatched red circle. Uh, for this, it came back, um, all the reviewers came back consistent or consistent with conditions except for storm water. They did uh, label this as inconsistent with conditions. Uh, however, these items that they listed can be addressed at the permitting stage. For your review, these are the standards for the review board. And these are the applicant's responses to the five hardship criteria questions. Uh, the first one is how the uh, request is unique and singular to the property. This one addresses the health, safety, and welfare of those around. This one addressed is um, how it's not a self-created hardship. And this one um, talks about the uh, substantial justice being done. And finally, uh, how it's 
um, in harmony with the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. So if the VRB approves this application, the following conditions are required. The site will comply with Chapters 5, 17.5, 21, 22, 23, and 26 in all technical standards of the City of Tampa Chapter 27 unless waived specific to this request. And that concludes staff's presentation. All right. And applicant, you have 10 minutes. Thank you. Um, before I start, can I get the PowerPoint brought up? Just use the mouse. Yep, got you. Good evening, board. Ryan Manassi with Johnson Pope, Director of Development and Planning, 400 North Ashley Drive, Suite 3100, and I have been sworn. Uh, thank you for hearing us tonight. This is in regard to BRB 2407 at 2313 West Bristol Avenue. Um, just to go into some history, shown in blue on your screen is a subject property, which is two platted lots of record and a portion of an adjacent plat north of lot 17, which is shown there on screen. Uh, this is a large size lot and it's unique relative to the surrounding lots in this block. Um, more or less uh, almost all the other uh, lots that are shown on this plat are still in their configuration with the exception of some to your southern, or I'm sorry, your bottom right hand side like six and five. Those are a lot and a half. So this lot being two plus platted lots is, is unique for this block. Um, you know, it, in, in reality, this lot can easily accommodate this ex small accessory structure, and I'll get into the details of the size of that too, just to kind of formally show you uh, what's on the site plan and what we're proposing. Um, sorry. So here is the site plan, or I'm sorry, the survey for the site. Blue outlines the property boundary, and the red indicates the existing single family red, uh, structure. You'll notice the existing pool screen enclosure, as well as a small accessory building. Um, that's already in existence. Just for some history, the, the house itself is, uh, according to property appraiser, 1926. The pool enclosure looks like it was added in the 70s along with this accessory structure. You can see where my cursor is. <clears throat> so the variance request is to reduce the required 60 foot front setback to 39 feet for the accessory structure. I've identified on the screen the red arrow indicating that from the front property boundary just to clearly show it. So West Bristol Avenue from the front boundary um, to where our proposed eave is for the accessory structure is 39 feet. Uh, we're aware that the permitted projections per the land development code allow for three feet for eaves and gutter gutters, but in this case, we, uh, it protrudes more than three feet, so we included it in the variance request tonight. And what I've done here is I've just highlighted some areas of the existing structure in our proposed, um, and I'll zoom in here and show you um, a little more. So the blue is the existing residence over here on the top is the existing screen enclosure. And then there is a small, again, accessory structure that's already in existence. And what we're proposing here tonight is to increase the size of that. Um, and that's where we come into our setback request. Um, let's see. So part of the goal here too was to preserve the existing uh, natural environment of the lot. There's a lot of mature vegetation. You could see the tree to your uh, left-hand side of the screen here, as well as there's trees in the front. And obviously, um, we didn't want to go over to the left-hand side of your screen because we could be in imposing that protective radius for the tree. Um, so that left us going forward for the uh, addition to the accessory structure. And what I just wanted to show you here was this: the, the overall red blocked area is a 60-foot setback applied to the lot to the lot from the front property boundary. And you could see how it goes, it would basically leave a small, unique shaped area which would not be conducive to any type of uh, accessory structure to be built. Um, we are maintaining our five foot eve to eve separation on the right hand side. And so really, again, we're left with going forward and that's you know part of the basis for our hardship for this um, variance request. These are our uh, responses, and Josh indicated them in his presentation. They're in our application packet for the variance criteria, one through five. Um, let's see, we believe our request demonstrates practical difficulties as well as unnecessary hardships and that the request ensures the public health, safety, and general welfare are protected. And again, like I said, the, the variance criteria outlined in the application packet that's been presented to staff to outline, um, provide justification to section 2780. <clears throat> 
Here's our elevation slides, just to give you an idea of what the accessory structure is proposed to look like. The height's gonna be 13 foot six inches. Um, and the overall size of the structure is only 468 square feet. And I'll get to a couple points with that in a second. Here's a, a current photo. What I did was I highlighted the general area where this accessory structure is currently and where it would be located. You could see that there's a six foot fence that's set back 20 feet, which is meeting the required setbacks for the zoning district. And there's that mature vegetation to include those trees. So really from street view, it's almost impossible to see what's behind there. And so it won't be impeding the front facade of the structure and it's still gonna be reminiscent of an accessory structure that is to the rear of the lot. <clears throat> and here's just a 3D view and try to kind of give you an idea of some of that mature vegetation that's to the front and then along the side that we didn't want to impact, which is really only leaving us this area to move forward towards Bristol. But again, what this demonstrates is that our front facade, which meets our setback, is the accessory structure is still well behind that. So again, it's reminiscent of what the code would allow for it. <clears throat> so the location and extent of the variance is dictated uh, mostly by the applicant's goal of tree preservation and, and keeping that natural state uh, as it is. Um, additionally, it does not affect any neighboring properties. The, the side that this accessory structure is proposed on immediately to your, uh, your neighbor to your next door is an apartment complex. Um, and its buildings actually set farther, uh, further north than where the structure is being proposed. Um, again, it's extremely unique large lot for this neighborhood or actually this platted uh, Bristol block face. Um, and the proposed accessory structure is clearly in scale with the lot and the surrounding uses. Uh, just to get in the size a little bit, the proposed accessory structure is uh, we're proposing 468 uh, square feet, whereas R50, as you, you're most likely aware, allows up to 750 square feet. Um, so that's only, um, we're only seeking 62% of what would be allowed in the zoning district. So again, trying to keep that in, in line with the area that we're working with and keeping it in uh, complementary to the, the principal structure. Also, just something to note is the side yard setback is far greater than what would be permitted with a single family home. If these were two, they are two platted lots of record. Um, if a home were to be there, they could build up to seven foot on the side. And as you're aware with the accessory structures, they typically go three feet to the rear and three foot to the side. So again, this is tucked well into the lot of this double uh, platted lot uh, site. The mature vegetation and the six foot fence keep the accessory structure footprint mostly out of view and behind the principal structure. So again, from that street view, as shown in that photo, it's gonna be almost impossible to see the entire uh, accessory structure in its proposed location. And <clears throat> something to point out is that we did receive a neighborhood poll from one of uh, the neighbors we reached out to, Miss um, uh, Annalise Meyer. She did a neighborhood poll along Bristol and she provided a, um, a letter of support for our request as well. She polled 17 homeowners. And I don't know if I have to switch to the is it BC or, um, oh, CCTV got me. So Miss Annalise Meyer, she provided uh, this email to the VRB site, but I'll, I have it printed out, so I'll turn it in for the record as well. Uh, polling the neighbors along Bristol, and all of them were either in support you know, for approval or they just didn't answer, and that makes up some of the rental properties and vacant lots as well. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions, and we would request your approval. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this application? All right, seeing none. Um, questions from the board? Um, you have five minutes for rebuttal, should you need it. I'll save your time tonight. Uh, right. Just re request your approval. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'm going to close the public hearing, open it up for a motion or discussion from the board. I, I think you said it earlier, this is pretty cut and dry. I mean, the key to me is if they built a home, it's a it's a permittable lot. Yeah. They built a home on this lot, it'd be closer to the front and closer to the side than what they're asking for. So um, I will go ahead and uh, move for approval. Um, I move that the variance request for case VRB 24-07 for property located at 2313 West Bristol Avenue. Um, 
be granted as depicted on the site plan presented for at the public hearing uh, for a reduction of the required 60 foot front setback to 39 feet for the accessory structure um, uh, with the encroachment of eaves and gutters based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record and at the public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code. Specifically, anything I need to know about? All right. Uh, specifically, that if the applicant built a home on this lot, it would be closer to the front and side setbacks than uh, what is being requested here, that you have a 1926 house and a 1970s pool enclosure, uh, along with a grand tree that prevent the, uh, the structure from going elsewhere on the lot, utilizing the remainder of the lot. Um, and that the new structure is behind a fence and behind the front facade. Okay. Motion by Mr. Feldman. Second. Second by Mr. Fultz. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. All right. Your variance has been granted for zero. Thank you, board. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, so the next case is VRB 24-08. This is the one that I need to recuse myself from, but we have not, our other board member hasn't arrived. Um, so. Three. Do we want to continue with three later? The three, you don't have a quorum, so the board can't take any action without a quorum. Um, well, we can, we can punt it, but there's not much distance to punt. No. We'll give it a shot. Or if you would like to continue for the next. Uh, well, so, date or if the can I make a motion to push it to the end yeah. of the agenda? <clears throat> that makes sense. All right, I'd like to make a motion to push VRB 24-08 to the end of our agenda to allow for a quorum. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I have to do it. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to VRB 24-10. Yeah, the next case is VRB 2410. The owner is the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority. Uh, the applicant is Renee Oy. The property address is 2223 North West Shore Boulevard, 400. Uh, the zoning district is in a planned development uh, alternative, the PDA, and the ordinance and zoning uh, cases there. Uh, there has been two previous actions. Currently, they are in the process of remodeling existing two-level mercantile mall anchor store. Uh, and there has been a previous variance request that allowed a 766 square foot uh, building sign for Lord and Taylor, which was tied to the site plan. So the request today is to increase the allowable building sign square footage from 193.3 square feet to 418 square feet. Uh, they're asking relief from code sections 27, 238, 7A8. Uh, building signs shall not exceed more than one square foot per one linear foot of building frontage facing a public street. No walls and signs shall extend more than 12 inches out from the wall to which it is attached, nor shall it extend more than 18 inches into the public right of way. Uh, here's an aerial with the subject parcel. Uh, highlighted in the orange dashed line. Here's their site plan with that red X of the location of the sign. Here's their proposed sign. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the reviewer's comments all came back either consistent or consistent with conditions. And again, for your review, the standards for the variance review board. And these are the applicant's responses to the five hardship criteria, the first one being the uh, unique and singular uh, uh, site issues there. The second is the health, safety, and welfare of the neighboring properties. Uh, third is how it's not a self-created hardship. Next is how it is uh, in harmony with the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. And finally, <coughs> how the substantial justice is being done. So if the VRB approves this application, the following conditions are required, that the site comply with chapters 5, 17.5, 21, 22, 23, and 26 in all technical standards of the City of Tampa in chapter 27, unless waived specific to this request. And that concludes staff's presentation. Okay. 
Applicant, if you could just state your name, address, confirm that you've been sworn in, and then you have 10 minutes. Okay, great. My name's Lance Hoy, I'm 5305 Moonshell Drive in Apollo Beach. I have been sworn. Uh, the, the first thing, I think one of the most important things that was discussed there uh, was that there was already a previous variance uh, approved for a much larger sign for Lord and Taylor up to 766 square feet. We're asking for almost half of that uh, in our request. Um, one of the things, and I have this, this kind of an elevation, which, which I think was turned in at the time. Um, that kind of shows you um, the Lord and Taylor sign was 766 and the Dick's Sporting Goods sign, or Dick's House of Sports sign um, location. And, Can you uh, zoom out a little bit on that? <coughs> Excuse me? Can you zoom out a little bit? We can't see the top. Oh. Zoom out a little bit, okay. Wait a minute, zoom out, plus, oh, yeah. There we go, there we go. So that was the signage that Lord and Taylor was, was uh, allowed to put up. It was 766 square feet. The um, one of the couple of the things as far as the existing signage uh, and the setback from the uh, one is from the, the access road that runs around the property. Uh, the uh, access road setback. To the access road from the parking lot in front of the in front of the location is approximately 457 feet to the access road. Your setback from Boy Scout Road is approximately almost uh, 1,200 square foot, uh, approximately uh, 1,196 feet back from the property, uh, from the building frontage to the uh, edge of the edge of pavement. <coughs> This kind of gives you some additional photos of the site and the site conditions right now. Uh, they're still working on the front of the building. Um, and then this is from the parking lot looking up. Going all the way back to the road, you see there's some trees and things that are, that are existing in, in the spot. This is a, one of the views from Boy Scout Road. As you can see the building right in this area right here from Boy Scout Road. There's another a view from Boy Scout Road that you can also still see the building. I took a picture of this right here. This is a 50 mile an hour speed, speed limit sign. It's on Boy Scout Road uh, with this uh, and somebody looking for the um, Dick's House of Sports. It's gonna be imperative that they have some visibility on that signage. Looking at the um, scale of the signage in, in relationship to the building itself. Uh, as you can see, the sign is not overbearing of the building uh, by no means. Uh, there's um, also, it's a sign structure that they attach to the front of the building that has that kind of shows you This structure here is, is actually made out of metal and um, shows you two locations of the signs. So this is this is a, a big metal structure. Your, your house of sports is on one level of the structure and the Dix is on the other level of the structure. That comes to your 418 square feet, actually 417.9, but 418. Um, One of the other things too is Dix is a multiple line of copy, uh, just basically on the, a lot of the other folks within the shopping center, such as Dillard's, says Dillard's, it's all on one line. Um, this sign actually is even larger than what the code would allow, but over the years it's been, I think, believe, I believe the code's most probably changed because originally in the original application, they were allowed, I believe, two square foot to every one linear foot of building frontage. That's how they came up with the calculation and only 
a smaller amount was uh, was requested. So uh, with with that in mind, we are taking additional square footage in between here and here, adding up. So uh, it does make the sign appear. This is how the county calculates the square footage. So with with kind of with all that in mind, you know, I believe that the, the health and safety of the community, being able to identify the uh, location of the, of the site and uh, not having to try to shrink the sign pretty much in half um, would be um, pretty much out of context with, with the size of the building. They're also, also in the process of building a bigger area over here. It's going to be like a fenced-in area that they're going to play some different sports. Uh, with uh, soccer and you can go out and try your golf club that you just bought inside, that type of thing. So uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Does that complete your presentation? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this application? Okay. Seeing none, um, open it up for questions from the board. Um, I have a question. Do you... Have any relationship with the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, that was one of the things. All the properties around there, surrounded by there, that really was affected. I think we had two notices to send out for people within the area, and, two, and one of them was the authority, and another one was. Uh, so, does the Aviation Authority just own the, the property? Yes, Obviously. they own the property. They uh, own the okay. entire shopping center. Okay. All right. All right. So. If you look, let's see, I have a site plan here that I can kind of show you. Um, and they had, they obviously had no objections to. No, to, I just, I, the, the agenda identifies Hillsborough County Aviation Authority as the owner. And I just, I had in my head that that's who you were representing, but. No, I, we're representing Dick Sporting. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we could, if, <laughs> if that helps, hey, I am in Hillsborough County. Um, any other questions from the board? Yep. All right. Then you have five minutes for rebuttal if you need it. Uh, really, I really don't have anything. Um, here's, here's a site plan that I was looking for. Um, but all of this property here, this is an individual parcel where the building's at. Uh, and then all of these other parcels, it's broken up into several different parcels, but all this property, entire property is owned by the, by the Hillsborough County. Thank you. Um, and if you've ever been out there, there's a lot of big signs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to close the public hearing, open it up for a motion from the board. Okay. I'll make a, I will move that the variance request for case BRB 24-10, located at 2223 North West Road Boulevard, uh, 400. Uh, as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for an increase in the allowable signage uh, on the building from 193.3 square feet to 418 square feet. Um, for the following, uh, uh, I'm sorry, be approved based upon the, the applicant presenting competent and Substantial evidence in the record of the public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code. Specifically that uh, it's, it's congruent with the rest of the mall, same size, scale uh, of everything else, and it, uh, it would look weird if it was smaller than it, but they're perfect. Motion by Mr. Fultz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, your variance has been approved four to zero. Thank you. Um, Bad news for the wait. Yeah, so, you know, I know pre, uh, although um, I previously disclosed that I have a conflict of interest because um, the representative and I work for the same company, um, I know previously you've like asked whether you sort of feel like you can make an informed decision. Is that just too close here? Um, could be. I mean, I okay. can. I can. If you if you think you can, we can 
see, but otherwise, I mean, you disclose that you do have a conflict. It's interesting you brought that up. So that's why I called you about a month ago, because I, I, I'm very, I, I don't have the understanding of what necessary conflict of interest is, and I would love for you to explain that, because I, obviously you have a question about it as well. Well, if, if, if you're interested in the matter, or if the matter could inure to your personal or financial gain, then you, you could have a conflict gotcha. of interest, okay. right? You can remain impartial, but Shoot. I know you don't. Attorney with your firm. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. So yeah. just knowing, so just knowing. <laughs> so. Oh. Does it help if the financial gain if I'm doing this case pro bono? So my firm is actually not making any money That's off an of this. That's interesting. That's an interesting. Well, there you have it. There's my Hail Mary request for you guys <laughs> to process this case today. I'm, I mean, only you can say whether you have a conflict or not. If, I mean. So, you know, the other sort of thought that I'm having is that I think that whatever decision we, I mean, this board, uh, I would be surprised if the decision is controversial. Um, and so I'm not sure that my vote is actually going to um, swing the ultimate decision. Um, which, you know, I'm just sort of talking out loud, kind of thinking through my process here. Um, you know, so I do feel like I can be impartial. Um, okay, that's okay. fine. If you put that on the record, then okay. that's You're not benefiting from this at all. No, no. no. And I just wanted to confirm that Board Member Murphy will not be in attendance. I just received an email from him. Oh, there you have it. Um, okay, yes. so we're going to continue with BRB 24-08 for property located at 526 Cleason Avenue. Okay, uh, this is case BRB 2408. The owner is Zachary and Betsy Mann. The applicant is uh, Nicole Narbar. Narbar? Did I say that right? <laughs> Nuga Bauer. I was way off. Okay. I got married since we filed this, so I'm going to use a new last name from now on. It's okay. easier to pronounce. Perfect. So don't worry. Uh, the address is located at 526 Luzon Avenue. Uh, the zoning is RS60, and the request today is to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 9 feet for a pool enclosure uh, in order to protect an existing tree. They're asking relief from code sections 27290.5. Uh, the screen enclosures, single family setbacks are 5 feet for the side five feet for the rear yard, and the same required setback, or the same required um, front yard setback for the zoning district. Uh, and for 27156, the setback regulations for RS60 are 25 feet from the front, 20 feet rear, and seven feet on the sides. Uh, the previous action for this site is um, from BRB 2292. This request was to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 5.5 feet. Uh, and that was previously approved. Uh, that request was only um, applicable to the location of the pool and did not uh, include the location of the screen enclosure. Uh, here is an aerial with the property in that orange dashed line. Here is their site plan, and then that red uh, dashed line is kind of the area of the variance request. Uh, the reviewer's comments came back either consistent or consistent with conditions. And again, for your review, the standards for the variance review board. And these were the applicant's hardship criteria responses. Uh, the first one addressing the uh, difficulties for the, that are unique and singular to the site. Uh, this one's addressing the health, safety, and welfare of the area. This is how the um, actions are not the or the direct actions are not from the applicant and how the substantial justice is being done and finally how it's serving in harmony with the tampa comprehensive plan so if the vrb approves this application the following conditions are required that the site will comply with chapters 5 17.5 21 22 23 and 26 and all technical standards of the city of Tampa in chapter 27 unless waived specific to this request and that concludes the staff's presentation Josh real quick question um, I think I know the answer based upon the numbering but uh, VRB 22 dash 
0092 that was approved in 2022? Yes. Okay, thank you. State your name, address, confirm that you've been sworn, and you have 10 minutes. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Nicole Neugebauer. Um, I have been sworn in. I am here today um, representing the property owner. Oh, my address is 401 East Jackson Street, for the record. I'm a land use attorney over at Stearns Weaver. I'm here representing the property owners of 526 Luzon Avenue on Davis Island. And if we could switch over to Elmo, a really brief presentation. Um, so this is the lot. It's located on Davis Island. It is a very strangely shaped lot. It is a triangle. Um, so it has two front yards under the city of Tampa code. Um, it is in the RS60 zoning district and the uh, R10 future land use category. Um, as explained by staff, there was a prior variance approval for this property um, back in, I think it was early 2023 that this was actually approved. Um, there was a, a previous variance request because they had a swimming pool on the east side of their property. There was a neighbor's uh, tree that was cracking the pool foundation, so we asked to have it relocated to the rear of the home, which because of the triangle-shaped lot is actually a, another front yard. Um, so we came in for a variance to reduce the front yard setback for the pool. Um, there were multiple notes to a screen closure on the site plan, but that was not specifically part of the request, so they asked us during permitting to come back and ask for another variance for the screen enclosure. Um, so our request today is to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 9 feet to allow screen enclosure around the pool that has previously been approved in its current location by this board. Um, the max height of the enclosure is 12 and a half feet. Um, again, as staff mentioned, there is a tree that is just under the grand tree criteria um, that's located near this project. And so because of that, we've had to kind of uniquely configure the screen enclosure to make sure that we're consistent with code requirements for um, natural preservation. And here is a picture of the site plan. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what we're looking at here. Okay, so the green line that goes all the way around is the screen enclosure location. Um, here is the location of the tree, and then there is the tree protection zone that's 10 feet around that. So the deck would not be built, or the screen enclosure would not be built within the area for the. Um, the tree protection zone. So it would be a, at a two foot bump out on each side, and then otherwise it would be 11 feet across. Uh, but we're asking for nine feet because of that two foot bump out on each side. Um, going through code criteria, largely these are the same as when we came and asked for the variance request for the pool, but essentially we had to relocate the pool because of that tree. And so due to that information, because of that, we had to. Um, Ask for the variance, and so now we're here asking for a variance to put the enclosure around the pool. Um, we will not be impacting the existing tree. We are, we've spoken with Stephen Iser um, with staff, and so we do understand the conditions on the project and we'll comply with them. Um, we also had uh, Ricky Pederica, who is our arborist for this project, um, and we'll be able to accommodate the single story pool and enclosure with just um, small pruning cuts. Um, with that, Natural Resources did recommend um, the project and find it consistent with um, conditions. All other city departments found it consistent or consistent with conditions, and so we're here today asking for your approval. Available, and the property owners are also here if you have any questions. Okay, just uh, complete your presentation. Yes, that's it. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this application? All right, seeing none, I'll open it up to questions from the board. Yes. Um, so it looks like there. The, does the existing pool still exist, or is it? Uh, is no. It? The, well, so the pool that was um, we requested to relocate it from the side yard to the right. So that's actually already been demoed. It's now a grass area that their dogs run around in. So that pool is long gone. The new pool is actually built and constructed. Um, so now we're we're literally just here for the screen closure to go around that. Okay. That was my question. Do you have no other questions from the board? Um, you have five minutes for rebuttal should you need it. Available if you have anything, but otherwise just ask for your approval. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. We're going to close the public hearing and open it up for a motion or discussion from the board. Good morning. <laughs> 
All right. I move for the variance. Uh, I move that the variance request for case VRB 24-08 uh, for property located at 526 Luzon Avenue uh, be granted as depicted on the site plan presented to the public hearing for a reduction in the front yard setback in the rear, but in the front yard, uh, from 25 feet to, tw to 9 feet for a pool enclosure uh, in order to protect the existing tree. Uh, as, uh, let's see. Um, based upon the applicant presenting competent and substantial evidence in the record that the of the public hearing, an unnecessary hardship, practical difficulty when considering five hardship criteria set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, specifically that they're avoiding hurting a tree and they would, and they're, it's an odd shaped lot uh, forcing this request. Okay. Motion by Mr. Fultz, their second. Second. Second by Mr. Fry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Right. Your variance is approved four to zero. Thank you. All right. Any other business? Board? Then I am going to adjourn the meeting.